Now, it turns out President Trump had once considered rescinding Neil Gorsuch's appointment to the Supreme Court. Now, this is an interesting story. It kind of shows you uh, who President Trump is, if you already didn't know. Now, according to a report from the Washington Post, President Trump had privately discussed his frustrations with Gorsuch in a meeting with a prominent Democratic politician. So wait a minute. He's speaking with the Democrat, and he's bitching about Neil Gorsuch. That's kind of hilarious. Uh, now, he was apparently upset that then-nominee Gorsuch had distanced himself from the president in a private February meeting with Senator Richard Blumenthal, claiming he was, quote, worried that Gorsuch was not sufficiently loyal. So here we go again. If you know anything about President Trump, it's that he values loyalty above all things. Not just values. He expects loyalty. That's something that he desperately wants. Are you loyal to me? Are you loyal? Are you loyal? If you're not loyal, you got to go. No, you have to be loyal to me if you want to serve in my administration or if you want to stay in your job. You've got to swear loyalty to me. It reminds me of a mob boss. You must be loyal to the family or else you'll find a horse head in your bed. <laughs> I hope not, but I don't know. There is talk that he is mob ties. Uh, but anyway, so Gorsuch, if you remember during the uh, first Muslim ban, right? Now, President Trump, he comes out with this Muslim ban. He's been promising this for a long time. Uh, and he's like, this is going to, you know, this is going to this is going to keep the bad people out of our country. Well, it was shown and, and, and proven that this plan was nothing more than an attempt just to ban people he didn't like. Muslims it had nothing to do with security. Uh, if they if they if it actually had anything to do with security, they would have banned Saudi Arabia as well. Saudi Arabia, again, that is where 15 out of the 19 9/11 hijackers that came from and they're actually um incredibly fundamentalist country with ties to terror groups. But no, no, let's not ban Saudi Arabia because President Trump has financial interests there. No, let's ban these other countries that had nothing to do with 9-11. Amazing, right? Now, Gorsuch called this uh, plan, quote, demoralizing and disheartening. So even Neil Gorsuch, who I wildly disagree with, thought the Muslim ban went too far, wasn't in favor of it. But here's the thing. That's what he ran on. He ran on banning Muslims. He said, and I quote, Donald J. Trump is calling for a complete and total shutdown on Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. He said it. And in fact, that screwed him over as some of the courts were like, I think it's pretty obvious that you were making, uh, that you were banning them based on their religion, which you can't actually do. That violates the First Amendment. You can't actually ban somebody or, or an entire country based on their religion. But he admitted it right there. He admitted it right there. It was pretty obvious it was out in the open. He said it out loud. Did you not notice? How could you not notice? How could you not miss that? I know, maybe he was thinking... Oh, no, no. This is just rhetoric. This is just what we talk about. This is just throwing out red meat to the base. But they forget Donald Trump is the base. He is a representative of the base. The guy watches Fox News religiously. He is the Fox News president. He's, if you took an average Fox News viewer, gave him a bunch of money, and then said, you can be president as well. That's President Trump. Now, to me, Gorsuch's protestations come a little too late. Nonetheless, that little uh, disagreement, that little spat, was more than enough to piss off the man-child. According to several Post sources familiar with the conversations, Trump had then floated the idea of rescinding Gorsuch's nomination over the slight, though it's unclear his explosion was mere venting or is discussed as a genuine prospect. Nevertheless, at the time, some in the White House and on Capitol Hill feared that Gorsuch's confirmation, which had been shaping up to be one of the greatest triumphs of Trump's tumultuous young presidency, was on the verge of going awry. Well, of course, that must have changed. 
uh, because Gorsuch is still there. He was com- he was confirmed, and he's sitting on the Supreme Court. And actually, Trump seems to be very pleased with him. In fact, he's been touted as to, uh, by the president as one of his greatest achievements since taking office in January. Now, I think part of that is because conservatives love Neil Gorsuch. Hey, look at that. We love an incredible corporatist on the Supreme Court. And that's exactly what he is. Do you know he once ruled in favor of a company that sued a guy for leaving his load? He was a truck driver during a blizzard. He said, look, I I broke down. We're in this gigantic snowstorm. I need to go somewhere or else I'm going to freeze in my cab. You know what happened? Gorsuch is like, freeze. You should freeze. You're not supposed to leave the uh, the, the merchandise. That merchandise is worth more than your life. Get your ass back in that cab. Pro-corporate. It doesn't even accurately describe how good he is to the corporations. And yet conservatives, they love him, right? Because, again, they're authoritarian and pro-corporate. But see, that's not enough for President Trump. Privately, Trump feels that he has to have your loyalty. So first, he was very mad uh, while meeting with this Democratic, with you know, with Mr. Blumenthal, and considered rescinding his appointment. And then this happened. According to 11 sources within the White House are familiar with the discussion, Trump was especially upset by what he viewed as Gorsuch's insufficient gratitude for a lifetime appointment to the nation's highest court. So he's not loyal enough. He should be thanking me more. Why isn't he bowing down to me and kissing me? Okay, well, look, uh, I'm not going to go there, but moving on. He demands loyalty, right? So Gorsuch, I don't know. He must have found out about this or something. I don't know how. But shortly after that interview, Gorsuch sent the president a handwritten note thanking him. Here's what it said. And you're going to love the sadness within this. Quote, your address to Congress was magnificent. And you were so kind to recognize Ms. Maureen Scalia. Remember the justice, right? Justice Scalia. And mention me. My teenage daughters were cheering the TV. Oh, upon receiving the note, the president was apparently placated, according to the report. So, look, all he had to do was just bend down and kiss his ass. That's it. Uh, that's how you That's how you please the president. I can't believe he was bitching about a note. Are you serious? Look, again, we have a baby as a president, right? Speaking of loyalty, look, the justices, in fact, every representative... It's supposed to be loyal to the Constitution. I know we have a lot of uh, other politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, that are loyal, more loyal to their donors than they are the Constitution. I understand that, right? But see, President Trump doesn't seem to understand that. He's not loyal to his donors or the Constitution. He's loyal to himself. He thinks, I'm the president, and you know what? You should be loyal to me. I'm the leader. But see, that's not a president... In my mind, that's a strong man. That's a dictator. Those are the people that call for loyalty tests. The office of the president, I'm sorry, is supposed to be loyal to the Constitution, loyal to his country. But again, he's not loyal to those things. He's loyal to himself and to his family. And that's it. He expects everyone around him to be loyal. And it seems for now, he's got that loyalty. Now that, I think, is especially dangerous given that there's a couple of active investigations into whether or not he colluded with Russia. And these investigations, especially the Mueller investigation, has the potential to uncover some sort of wrongdoing. Now, in the event that happens, then I would expect to call for impeachment. Now, the problem with that is that if that happens, he might have enough people loyal to him in Congress that could mean we get launched into some sort of constitutional crisis. I hope that does not happen. Um, And, you know, Mueller is, again, there's no guarantee that Mueller is going to find anything. But in the event that it does, Republican politicians have to be willing to be able to do an impeachment proceeding. And I just don't have enough faith. I think they will be loyal to the president, which 
I don't even want to think of the outcome of that, but it's not going to be good. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.